This is Startup a Storefront. Picture this, you're looking to launch a Shopify store for your new product. You sign on to Shopify to set things up only to realize you have a huge problem. You have zero photos. That's where Suna comes in. Instead of having to do it yourself, Suna takes the stress away. You ship their products to their studio, you join a remote video call, and you only have to buy the assets that you like. Photos, videos, and GIFs, they've got you covered. On today's episode, we're talking with Liz Georgie, the co-founder of Suna, about why they have a wait list of over 3,000 photographers ready to work with them, the similarities between Suna and Goop, and why she secretly considers herself a witch. All right, welcome to the podcast. On today's show, we're talking to Liz from Suna. Thanks so much for joining. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you. For people who don't know, what does your company do? Suna is a virtual photo shoot platform. We make it possible for brands to get professional photos and videos entirely online. So they order a photo shoot online, they can attend their photo shoot online, and then they order their content online. They pay for their content entirely all a cart. So instead of having to put up thousands of dollars up front for a photo shoot, you get to see the photo shoot and purchase the assets you truly love. But I'm excited to be here today because we actually just launched an in-person experience in Los Angeles. The storefront so, is a here. Storefront. The storefront. Yeah. 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 In Silver Lake. In Silver Lake, yes. So yeah. we opened as of yesterday. What made you want to start the company? Were you one of the brands that was buying this content and then you were like, oh, problem, maybe an opportunity? No, I was on the other side of it. So I worked in production my entire career. I worked in television for 10 years and then I became a commercial director. So I made commercials for General Mills and Target and Wells Fargo, the biggest brands in the world. And I had to say no to all my friends that were starting Shopify stores. I couldn't figure out how to help them get the professional quality assets that I was making for my big clients to help sell their products, to market their products, to promote on social media. And so I looked at my friend and business partner, Haley, who is a professional animator by trade, and I said, if we were to just completely reimagine production, just take every rule that we believe to be true and turned it on its head and tried to do it differently, could we make custom photos, custom video clips affordable? And the challenge we gave ourselves, we wanted it to be cheaper than buying an image on Shutterstock. Okay. So it which, was, which is how much? Yeah. How much was it? Was that, about what's your $49 at, at the, the time. time. Okay. okay. So that is why Suna's photos are $39 a piece and Suna's Smart. video clips are $93 a piece. And we deliver them in 24 hours. So we think it's the fastest and most affordable way to get completely custom content. So walk me through it. So if I'm a brand, let's say I have a bow tie company. Sure. And I'm like, all right, I need some photography. Bow ties, got bow you. Ties. <laughs> or anything. <laughs> anything. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. So if you're a bow tie company and let's say you're starting a new Shopify store, you're going to want some of the classic product on white images. So you can actually buy the product on white photo shoot. We actually have a Shopify launch pack that costs 300 bucks. Every photo you need to actually create that product display page and show off all those images. But now, You're also going, I need to have some content for Instagram to get people to find my bow ties in the first place. So then we can also help you create the lifestyle content, the interactive content that gets people actually excited about converting to the website. So this is gonna be things like, you can create a photo shoot where you book a model. So you can book a model that, you know, wears your bow tie. Yeah. Maybe you want to make dog bow ties. You can actually yes. book a dog or a cat model we did on the that. platform. I don't know if you knew that, but yeah. we did that. So yeah. Then, yeah, perfect. <laughs> and so you can book a model. You pick the backgrounds that you want, whether you want a solid color backdrop or a kitchen or a living room. And then uh, you join your photo shoot. You join on your phone, you can join on your laptop, wherever you are. Or now if you're in LA, you can walk on in and see we'll the whole thing like happen in life. In your yeah. Store. yeah, that's such a crazy idea. Because there's a lot to pull off in It was in an insane amount process. of technical work. Yes. So let, let's, let's go with your first step. Sure. What was the first step you were like, okay, I'm going to do this pop-up version. We can do it via Zoom. So it's like, like what was the first, inter- the first iteration of this? Well, one of my best slash worst qualities is that I literally don't believe anything is impossible. So That's the best quality. It, it's, yeah, but it makes everyone else in your life crazy. No, it means you're from the future. <laughs> and, and everyone's catching up. Okay. I have this problem too. Okay, well, this thank you. This is great. You're from the future. I, it's I nice try to, to meet be. you. Yeah. It's, it's nice to meet you. Uh, I basically called up all my engineering friends who worked in live broadcasting. So I said, okay, you know, various friends who I met at various TV stations, I want to do this thing where I hack a Canon camera to actually remove the Wi Fi chip to trick it to route the assets to the cloud where I can do all the compression in the cloud in real time. In real time. Can I do that? And they would be like, well, I mean, Maybe, it's such a, sort of. I love the thought. That's, that's really thinking like, outside the box. <laughs> like, what, what are you going to do with it when it gets there? I'm like, don't worry about what I'm going to do with it when it gets there. I just want to mm-hmm. know if that's right. 
possible. Yeah. And so my friend Colin, believe it or not, was like, let me try. Like he was like excited about the challenge, I think, of like, let me see if I can figure it out. So one weekend we like hacked some opportunities of how we thought it might work together. And one actually worked where we could send the asset to the cloud. It'd be in the you know raw format, but then we'd in real time create the various resolutions. The next step was, okay, now how do I make that visible in an app? How do I make that so that other so people the customer can, can see, see it? it. That's yeah, right. The so future the, customer. Yeah. The future customer can see it. So again, you know, Colin was excited that we solved the first set of problems. So Haley designed an app. My, my co-founder being an animator is an inc incredibly beautiful designer, makes awesome visuals. So she designed an app and said, okay, Colin, can you, can you make it show up here? And uh, sure enough, we were able to make it show up there. The next step was to make it shoppable, right? Could you make it an e-commerce app where people could actually then purchase that asset in real time? Or that seems yeah. like the simple part. Right, I was gonna say yeah. that of all the steps, that's the most straightforward, it's been done before. Yes, we had a, yeah. we had a playbook for how to do yeah. it, right? But what's actually strange is, unlike maybe shopping for a handbag or shopping for you know clothing, a lot of the images actually it's collaborative experience, right? You don't shop collaboratively. Like if you and I were going shopping together in person, maybe we would, but online, I'm not gonna send you my shopping cart and be like, what do you like? What do you not like? Let me one know, of the, yeah. Yeah, one of the core functionalities that Suna needed to have is the ability for maybe me to lead the photo shoot, but then send it to my social media person to tell me what would actually be the best things to purchase. Or maybe send it to my Amazon agency to tell me what would be the best things to purchase. And so to make carts that could actually be collaborative and could be an experience that people could really art direct together was a, a big turning point. It took us almost 18 months from initial idea to something that we could put in front of customers consistently that yeah. didn't suck. Why the name? What does Suna mean? Suna is a funny, silly story. Is it story. like a Spanish way of... Sooner than later? No, it's That's not even that. That's what a lot of people think. Um, <laughs> I'm so glad I'm not the only one. Dad joke, dad joke. It's a Nick. good dad joke, yeah. I guess. It's the, it's a favorite. It's a it's a definite wow. favorite. Suna, you know, my, yeah. another favorite. <laughs> another favorite is you know when people you know leave a meeting, see you Suna. Okay. Like, you know, there's. I'll give you another one for later. Oh, these are bad. Yeah. Uh, I know. Yeah. It's Tell me the real story. I'm like. So the, <laughs> <laughs> oh. so the real story is that my co-founder Haley and I went to a branding workshop in Malibu. And it, the whole auspice of this branding workshop is you had, a, you had a new business idea, but you didn't know what to call it. So come spend a week with other people also trying to name their businesses and we'll you know, drink tea and not wear shoes and have a great time. And by the end, you'll come up with a name. And to be honest with you, it worked. Yeah. I don't know why it worked. <laughs> and the reason it worked is because I'm Italian. I'm 50% Italian. One of the very first things we knew we wanted to do was deliver photos in one day. That was like, we want it to be one day because it's so hard. It takes weeks, oftentimes, sometimes months. So une in Italian is one. If you speak Spanish, uno is one. You know, un as a Latin core is a common explanation for one. Digging so, deep. <laughs> yeah, so we landed on, we thought that Americans had an easier time with double O's. And we have evidence of this with like names like Google and Facebook than they do with like the U. So we were like, okay, let's just change it to O O N A. And then of course we couldn't get Una.com. So we just started adding letters to the front. <laughs> Tuna, Luna, Luna, <laughs> and Suna was not only the one that just sounded the best, but it also looked great and the URL was available. And so it just felt magical. And actually over time, I think the thing about Suna, we've done a lot of research on now the word Suna. In Hindi, it actually, it means like lonely pursuit, which I think sometimes startups oh, no. actually are. It's a, a, like, yeah. can be a very lonely Love pursuit. That. And then uh, in a lot of Mexican native languages, a Spanish natives, but Spanish, but native Mexican versions of Spanish, Suna is the name of a, a night queen, which, to be honest, like Haley and I often joke that we're two witches who just make shit happen. And so it has always felt like this strange validation of like, yes, we are queens of the night who just work way too hard <laughs> and have now caught this company. So, uh, yeah, that's how we got sued. Very fortunate that it was something beneficial as opposed to like you find out later. Oh, in Hindi, it actually means something awful. It, true. Yeah. Yes, it, I was going through that process, too, when I started my business. It yeah. was like completely awful in like Spanish and just like yeah. it was off. You do have to do that research. I think 
another serendipitous thing that happened, and this is like not a story that Haley loves, but I was flying home from that trip and I was reading the New York Times and I read an article about Gwyneth Paltrow and about Goop. And I've always thought Goop was such a weird name, but they go on to explain that she had hired a branding agency for some obscene amount of money. And the branding agency had uncovered in their research that the one thing that all of the most successful billion dollar plus valuation companies had in common other than technology of the last decade was that they had inserted double O's somewhere in their name. So it was like Facebook, Yahoo, Google, there was like a list of them where it just seemed uncanny. And so what they pitched to her was, let's take your initials, GP, and let's just put two double O's in there for good luck. Oh. And that is how they landed on Goop. And I was like, Suna has double O's. Wow. That's it. That's <laughs> that's got to be it. That's We're going to be so adding a double O to start a storefront. Yeah. All right. So then, so you have this product 18 months later, it works, and then you, you have to go acquire customers. Yeah. And so... What is that like? Who are you going after? Are you tapping into your network? And so that, therefore you kind of have an easier time where people like beta testing it? Or is it, it's also because the customer is not used to what you're offering either. Like, yeah. you know the problem well. And so you're sort of the expert of the pain. Yeah. But now I would say most brands probably don't, don't think it's that painful or don't have your worldview from the future. And so they're like, is this really a problem? I don't know. And so, so then you have to sort of sell your way into them giving you not so much money, but more of a try, like an attempt. A little bit. I think there's two things that I always tell founders. The product being done doesn't mean the product should be public. So we had a working version of the product in January of 2019, but we decided instead of launching in January 2019 to go through a technology accelerator and vlog the entire experience. We went through Techstars Boulder from January to April of 2019, and we vlogged week to week everything we were working on, working on you know, our first warehouse, working on improving the app, building the marketing website, and actually kind of building an audience where we could also talk about the purpose and the mission of the business. And so, listen, this was not a super viral YouTube show, but it was enough to get about 2,000 people on the wait list by the time That's that we significant. launched. Yes. Yeah. Was, Brad, and, was Brad Feld, is he in Boulder? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So cool. Brad is definitely a supporter of Sooner. <laughs> Suna. Sure, he's yeah. become, he's sort of a funny person in that. Like, he's I don't a very think, funny person, very unique individual. Yes. I don't think he understood our business at all at the yeah. outset, but now I think he's become <laughs> yeah. a true believer. You you know, that was a really interesting way to do it. And I think, yes, did it delay us launching? Of course. But it allowed us to, on launch day, so then we launched in May of 2019 to a beta version of the product, it allowed us to get 200 people from that 2,000 person wait list willing to try it. And we basically said, we're going to do your photo shoot for free. If you don't like anything, no obligation. You don't have to buy anything. And if you do like something, it's $39 a photo. We'll deliver it tomorrow. Isn't that great? And that was... That's set. amazing. Honestly, that's amazing. Well, it was a bet that we could make, yeah. right? Because yeah. at that point, I'd raised, I think, $1.2 million in venture. So I had a little bit of money in the Pre-beta? bank. Pre-beta? Pre-beta. Wow. Mm-hmm. Good for you. I'm good at talking, and I'm not a schlub. <laughs> and, you know, it turns out the technology... You're app, from who, the future. Engineers it's who... It's easy to understand. Yes. And venture... I went after VCs who were engineers by background because... Yeah they could understand the challenge of what we had actually built, the software of what we'd actually built. So I'd raise enough money where I went, they don't need to pay us anything and we just see what happens, right? Fully thinking, oh my God, no one's going to buy anything. But in that first, so we did a beta from May of 2019 to December of 2019. And then that first seven months, we had 95% checkout rate. So you know, 95% of folks who had a shoot found something in that shoot that they wanted to buy. And so it's just to me the learning of like, you got to, if you believe in your product, you got to bet on the product, right? And really let it go. So just going off of that too, I mentioned that I just started a social media yes. agency and we do content creation too. What do you recommend for someone like me or just anybody who's doing something in your industry and starting their own business? What do you recommend? Well, first, when you're starting your own business, Just know what you're signing up for, you know, know that you're signing up for really living ahead of your customers. I always think the CEO job is really chief education officer. The number of times a week that I say we all buy everything on the Internet and the thing that all of those transactions have in common is a visual asset. But the creation of those visual assets is slow, hard and expensive. I say that. 
a thousand times a week. And so be comfortable with it. Know what you want to say. Know that what you're saying is educational, clear. How can you help someone who's never touched social media, in your case, yeah. feel like it means something to them? It's tangible to them. It touches them. They can, in some way, shape, or form, grasp why what you do matters. And it strangely becomes easier to be that repetitive over time. I like now I, it's sort of a game with me of like, how can I continue to make this interesting for myself, right? So that's first and foremost, like really understand how you can educate and, and be passionate in the education. The second thing I would say is always be joyful about your business. And, you know, I meet so many founders, people like yourselves, but also founders that are customers. I spend a lot of time trying to make sure I talk to them on Twitter, talk to them on their shoots, be present and know what's going on and ask what's wrong. Like, don't just ask what they liked. You know, we're all so interested in knowing what they liked because we want that validation. But asking your first couple of customers, like what absolutely did not work for you is like being given the Google Maps directions to success. <laughs> like <laughs> it's literally being yeah. told, turn left here, stop here, quit doing this, yeah, right? Try and, again. So, and try again. And there's nothing wrong with that. You're taking your best guesses, right? And you want to be able to learn from that. And if you're joyful about it, people feel more comfortable about telling you it. If you're sure. dreading it, if you're uncomfortable with it, then they don't want to tell you. And I want Google's Maps directions to becoming a billionaire. If I could get them, I yeah. would take them. And so <laughs> this is the closest thing I have <laughs> to being able to do that. That's what this I podcast is yeah. in a lot of ways. Like we, we, it's just like free game for a lot of people, for our 100%. listeners. Also, like it's therapy for me, for us in some way. Like, oh, you're going through it too? Cool. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like when 100%. it does get hard. I believe before the pandemic, you had people come to the studio and, and watch like clients and stuff. And your background as a commercial director, you're familiar with client and agency being on set in some capacity. Uh, I used to work in commercials out here too. And pre-pandemic, we had this whole video village set up for them. And then yeah. during the pandemic, once we started shooting again, that was all operated over Zoom. And we would patch the camera feed directly into Zoom. And then there was no village anymore. And then after things started open again, in my mind, I was like, oh, everyone's going to come back. But it really was like 30% came back. And then the rest just stayed remote because it was just so much more convenient. And I'm curious with your model, if you've ever had people request to come back into the studio or if everyone's just cool with being remote from and watching from a screen. Yeah, the bet we're making opening in L.A. right now is really a trend that we've seen a lot in our existing studios, which is on a first shoot, when people haven't tried Suna, haven't touched Suna, don't totally know if they're going to love it, they actually sometimes do want to come in and shop the prop wall and pick the plant in the shot and pick the paper once they've seen it with their eyes, right? And so our studio location here in LA is kind of like a shoppable studio, which I think is a little, it's very different from a video village where everything is set up and ready to go, yeah. right? But it gives people that tangible moment where they can actually choose, make choices, and then see it. And then what we see is they go online, right? They go, okay, I know what this is now. I totally understand it. But, you know, we went from about 10% in Q4 of last year coming in to our existing spaces to almost 35% in Q2 of this year. And part of that is just because I think people are sick of their houses. They want to get out. Suna is incredibly fun. I mean, unlike Video Village, one of the other core tenets of the Suna vision was to make production feel friendly mm -hmm. instead of so damn sterile. It's the yeah. most yeah. sterile and unfriendly industry ever. People do not have a good time in Video right. Village. If you think they're having a good time, you're no. kidding yourself. I've You've never been as well. in one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so we want it to be fun. And so there's a piece of it where the interactivity is really fun. And the other piece that I, I can't you know stress enough is I actually think that businesses that are going to be really successful in the future they have to make big bets earlier on you know we've all seen direct-to-consumer product companies now starting retail storefronts post series d post series e after they're going public I sort of believe that companies that aren't in products but actually are in experiences have to make those bets earlier mm -hmm. and so since my company is an experienced company i really believe that making these bets earlier was key it also gives you good feedback like the feedback 100%. loop is instant and i think that's everything for yes you. if you really want to win the feedback loop is necessary 
Uh, from your perspective, my brain would be going crazy every day if I were you about automating as much as humanly possible. 100%. And so, and so I, I think like this, like, so I had a bow tie company, which is why I asked you about yes. the bow ties. And so I thought, I think like this, I'm like, wow, if Suna was around when I had this company, I would have the prototype sent to Suna. Yep. I would have those photos made. I would then get them, by the way, Take, I mean, you guys know this, but for listeners, bow ties create the worst shadow ever. Mm -hmm. And so getting the shadow right was like very hard, super, super mm -hmm. annoying and difficult and not fun. Yeah, anyway, chins are the problem. <laughs> just, no, no. I mean, like, just like the bow tie. Yeah. Anyway, whatever. We figured it out, but it took like way too long. And so when I think about this today, it's like get the prototype, ship it to Suna, have them take photos, cool, buy them, put it on your website. I haven't purchased anything. I don't even need to yet. And I'm just yeah. like beta testing whether people like it, start an Instagram, make some cool videos and go. Yeah. Super easy. Like CPG overnight. I want us to be as seamless in your technology stack as any other part of running your store. So as seamless as Stripe, as seamless as Shopify, as seamless as your shipping provider. And we're getting there. But how? How? What are you doing? Part of how we're getting there is becoming an API that implements with wherever you sell. So today, if you sell on Shopify, you can download our app and instantly suck in all your product display pages, all your products. When you're ready to launch, you don't need to download crop resize. You can just instantly publish to pages and locations in your store. We are now doing that for big commerce and Amazon as well. So we're just trying to become as integrated with your existing inventory as we possibly can. And Amazon, you said too? Yes. Yeah. And that's huge. Yes. The Amazon requirements are no joke. a nightmare. Yeah. And to be honest, Amazon is our fastest growing part of our business for this exact reason. Yeah, that makes sense. The pain is so heavy. The pain is quite I mean, the Excel sheet you, is another, yeah. <laughs> and so we're thinking about how do we just connect all of our software to every API we possibly can. Once we get through the entire merchant stack, then we're going to go to the marketing stack. So getting into your Klaviyo, getting into your attentive, getting into the places where you're actually marketing your product, right? So... That is really where we're laser focused right now is how do we integrate as much as we humanly can. Okay, let's let's just keep going down this road. So at some point, if you have all the uh, enough data, let's say, or enough market knowledge about Spotify, seasonality, people's buying habits, now you're into marketing, more data, understanding things deeply, then all of a sudden, I mean, we, we could like... Are you reading my mind in the future? Or I mean, I've, yeah, I've thought Where about this going? for a long time. I had this deck, I can send it to you. I made it probably 12 years ago and it's called Mad Max. And basically Mad Max is like your customer concierge that just knows exactly when you're buying something, how you're buying it. So if you think about the bow tie thing, mm -hmm. if you have data to suggest that like bow tie season, let's make it simple, is like wedding season, super simple. Mm -hmm. Then I can tweet at you. I can, I can use social media to get your attention during those moments. The right times. The right times. Now you can apply that to any product in any world, right? If I'm if I'm expecting or if we're having a baby or mm. whatever it is like that, then it becomes super simple. Sure. And so you could easily automate all of that, you personally, Suna, at yeah. some point. What I'm actually thinking about is slightly more bizarre maybe than what you're Ooh. describing. Go okay. I'm excited. on. Yeah. The yeah, dark like witch that. has spoken. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we want to make every single e-commerce store entirely personalized to your visual preferences. And because it's like for the individual, for the individual. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's how do you do that? Yeah, I was gonna say, That's a that lot down. of looks. Imagine this. Imagine there's a company that can take photo shoots at scale and they can do it affordably. So now you're not just shooting your product on one model. You're shooting your product on 100 models because you actually can afford to scale in that direction appropriately. Right. Not only that, but because this company is taking those photos for you at scale, and they're delivering them via an API to your Shopify store, they can actually start using the data that Shopify provides about who's shopping that page and intelligently serve the right photo at the right time to the right customer. Wow. Got it. Give me a use case. My favorite use case is my co-founder and I are big Birkenstocks people, but Birkenstocks tends to be on the verge of the granola and not the verge of the witch. <laughs> and so my version of Birkenstocks.com might be a little more witchy than mm -hmm. your version yeah. of Birkenstocks.com. So now the models look my age and maybe the models are wearing really colorful clothes or wearing colorful nail polish versus the very boring, no nail polish, completely nude variation mm. that I currently see when I go to Birkenstocks.com. The future of fashion. Yes. Are you beta testing this with anybody? A I brand? Yeah. We're currently trying to determine how to use the data that we get via our API to make decisions because the decision logic is actually the really sure. complex, meaty piece of the equation. Yeah, there's headline risk there. 100%. Yeah, that could be tough. That's fascinating. 
I'm actually curious if you've got more of these, like the LA storefronts that you're just building out and opened other production hubs around the country, you know, Atlanta, mm. New York, uh, some somewhat Austin, Dallas. Like, are you thinking of going in all of those markets as well? Is LA your, your first little foray into that? So we've been in Austin for almost two years and okay. we love Austin. Austin's been great. We're mm. also uh, in Minneapolis, Denver and Seattle. And so we kind of actually started with Minneapolis and Denver because they are these cities where there is a huge volume of creative talent, but not a huge volume of creative work. And so that allowed us to get the best of the best creative talent working on the shoots. And for us, whether we sell through a particular shoot is really hinging on, did you deliver great assets? right so we really had to bet on that and that gave us really positive customer information it also taught us how exactly to onboard photographers and teach them how to be successful on the platform which i think was exceptionally important before we went into bigger markets so we are now looking at you know markets like atlanta markets like new york i think we're trying to really determine la will be a big test right like how does this go are people excited about it does it really change the dynamics of what we see in terms of customer acquisition. I'm a really big believer that you cannot just spend into infinity on Facebook and Instagram and be successful. You need to be extremely unique and extremely thoughtful about the mix of how you acquire customers. And so depending on how this goes, we'll make pretty big decisions about next year. How's your retention yeah. though? Like, like I'm hearing you are training all these uh, photographers how to be successful, how to create great assets. And in my head, I'm like, they're going to, you know, be thankful for that knowledge. They're going to provide good work for you, but then they're also very likely to leave and go do their own thing. Maybe. They're, where are they going to go to get a 401k and health insurance? I you mean, give them that? Wow. Yes. That's huge. We've made a path. So essentially, you know, if you're a photographer on the SUNA platform, there's a path where if you are in the top 20% of photographers who consistently deliver a five-star experience, consistently deliver a great cart, and consistently hit your KPIs, within about 90 days, you will be offered a full-time job with health insurance and all the benefits that you could imagine. And not only is that great for our economics, it's exceptional for retention. Yeah. And it means that we today have an over 3,000 photographer wait list on our platform. <laughs> That's so, impressive. Yeah. But you only know, like, I don't know to do that had I not worked in the industry. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Like, I worked 15 years in this industry mm-hmm. without a 401k, yeah. <laughs> without um, Unless you get insurance. into a guild or something like that or, or a union, then you're on your own. Correct. And I truly believe that this upcoming generation, I mean, I don't know how old you are, but this upcoming generation. I'm 61. (laughs) Yeah. You look great. Um, There is a foundational difference. They have been so burned by the gig economy and the way that what we did as an industry has been sort of tarnished by the Ubers and the DoorDashes and, you know, the gig economy software products of the world I'm not sure that our industry can keep doing this and actually continue to attract really great talent. If I were to walk in your Silver Lake store, what does it look like? What do I see? Give me, give, give us a sense of, of the setup. I think the first thing you'll notice is just how colorful it is and how much it feels like a build your own photo shoot experience. So you'll walk in, you'll see a prop wall where there are hundreds of interesting props, everything from plates to prisms to plants. And then you'll come around the corner and you'll see, you know, 40 different paper backdrop colors that you can choose from, a rolling cart of textures if you want to do a bathroom scene, if you want to do a, ba- you know, backsplash scene, whatever it is, every kind of imaginable pattern on on earth. You'll also notice right away the massive 60 foot <laughs> or 60 inch, 60 foot, my God, 60 <laughs> inch interactive virtual photo shoot that will show you your photo shoot in real time. So you can click on each image and shop those images right there at the store. And then of course, hopefully there's other people in the studio who you can collaborate with and give them feedback on their product shots and take a look at each other's projects and and say, you know, if I was a customer, what would, which image would, you know, get exciting for me and, uh, you know, actually have some people together to really talk about what's going on. And I had a question about that too. Like, what did you originally start with? Because not everyone may have like access to like a full blown bathroom that they can film in. Like, Mm. did you start with just like a tile background and like a few Mm. 
backdrops or like where did that all no begin? i'm crazy yeah and i decided <laughs> to spend four hundred thousand dollars building a commercial production kitchen a living room an office set <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, that's awesome a, yeah like perfect e-com bay for perfect product and white our first location had about seven bays and they all were very all completely different but it allowed us to offer the most diversity right out the gate yeah i knew if i went out the gate with product on white it would be a dud so i right. had to go out with something that was hard to get and the hard to get meant it was worth trying oh for sure yeah and where are you guys at from a funding perspective now so we just raised our Series B at the end of last year. We raised $35 million from Bain Capital Ventures. Congrats. And we are currently using that capital to make good decisions and uh, hopefully not fundraise for a minute. I raised $50 million in less than two years. Yeah. And so I'm really trying to not fundraise for like a second. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. Right Sooner, the next unicorn. You yeah. heard it here first. That's good stuff. Thank you. Where can people find you? Tell them. Well, they can go to Suna.co or Suna.com. That's always first. Try those out. Check out the website. <laughs> <laughs> double O. Yeah. The double Very O. Very easy. Or if you're more of a social media person, come follow us on all the things. We're at Suna Studios on all the things. And we hope you'll leave a comment or show some love to one of the products we're featuring. One of the most fun. We have over 100,000 followers on Instagram. And, you know, if you have a photo shoot at Suna, we might share your photo shoot with our followers. And that's so awesome. that's a fun thing to do, too. Thank you. Love it. Thank yeah. you so much. Thanks for coming on. The I'm so happy to be here. Thank you yeah. for having me. Hey, you. Yeah, you listening. Thank you so much for making it to the end of the episode. If you just can't get enough, check out our subscription on Apple Podcasts. For only $4.99 a month, you can listen to the full length, uncut, unedited podcast episodes. We're giving out life changing advice for less than the price of your morning coffee. What a deal. Make sure to follow us on Instagram, subscribe on YouTube, and we cannot wait to see you next week for another great episode. Cheers.